Good morning and welcome to worship at the Presbyterian Church of Los Gatos online. We're so glad that you're joining us today for this time of worship um, here while we're distant in these coronavirus times. And I pray that our time together today would draw you closer, not just um, to God who meets you here, but also to each other in this experience. My name is Pastor Dave Watermolder, and on behalf of our church family, welcome. If you're new or visiting with us, we're glad that you are here today. I want to um, just bring a few announcements as we start our worship time together today. Uh, I'm coming to you from my, uh, from my kids' playroom in our house. Last week I was on the couch in the living room. I wonder where you are today. Wherever you are um, this morning, I hope that you're with, if you're with your family, that you're all staying safe. And if you're on your own, that you are feeling encouraged by uh, connections with your loved ones um, who are at a distance. Um, this, this time of worship today is meant to inspire and lift you in these hard times. So our music um, is offered as a, as a gift uh, from our musicians. We have a variety of leaders and voices leading this time and, and, and a message for the morning that I hope will carry you into your week. Um, on Wednesday evening this week, we are meeting on a Zoom call, all church Zoom call, and you're invited. It's a week, it's a midweek check-in. We're calling it Shelter and Study. Chance to just talk a little bit, see each other's faces, uh, share in small groups, and pray. If that sounds good to you, I invite you to be, be there. And if, and if, you're, um, if you haven't gotten the link, we send it out each week in our weekly email. If you're not on that email list, you can contact Carlo Panaghetti, uh, carlo at pclg.org, and he'll get you on the list. Um, we also, in these days, know that some people are stuck at home um, who are older, who are feeling sick, who are just worried and scared to go out to the grocery store. And if that's you, if you kind of struggle to get out to the grocery store, um, your church is here to help. Lisa McKibben in the front office um, is answering the phone um, from the front, front office. So if you want to call in, you can, or you can email her and let her know that you'd love to have, that you'd like to have somebody help you get some groceries. We have Aaron, Aaron Runners, who are um, being coordinated with our deacons, and they're ready and willing to go out and get you your groceries. Um, some of us already are feeling the financial crunch and pinch of these times, and maybe that's you, uh, through job loss, uh, through lost hours or wages. And as that happens, um, I want you to know that your church is here with you as well. If you're experiencing uh, financial hardship um, because of the changing circumstances, um, be in touch with me as your pastor um, or through the deacons. We, we look forward to being a partner with you in these days. Thank you to everyone for your generous uh, support for your church uh, as we go through all of this. Um, I think that we have an announcement uh, and check-in from our youth director, Steve Fainer. So let me go to him now. Hello there, I'm Steve Fainer. You might recognize me from such church announcements as, hey, we've still got youth group tonight, and the pancake breakfast is today. I'd like to take a moment to share an opportunity with you that I think you'll enjoy. You can join students and youth staff, whoever is free that particular day, each weekday this week, in a liturgy of prayer at 11 a.m. on Zoom. Each morning, I ask a few of the people that show up on Zoom to lead our prayer time, to sing a song, to read a scripture, whatever is available. And if you're interested, you should join us. 11 a.m., Monday through Friday this week. See you soon. And of course, yes, there is youth group tonight. Five o'clock for middle school, 7.30 for high school. See you sometime. Peace. Thanks, Steve. Good to see you. Um, so we're going to go into our worship time together today. And as we do, I invite you to set this time apart a little bit. Um, you can light a candle if that helps you. You can just um, open your heart and your mind as you come into worship today. You can know that even at a distance, uh, distance worship, God is closer than we know, and that's what we believe. Our opening hymn is What a Friend We Have in Jesus. You're invited to, to just listen in, to sing along, to participate fully in the worship service today. Come, let us worship God together.
On this fifth Sunday of Lent, let's gather our hearts in prayer together. Loving God, we turn to you in prayer, for it is in you that we have our refuge. We bless your name, most holy God. You are our rock, our fortress, and our redeemer. Lord, we seek to have hearts and minds turned to you as we gather to worship. Lord, help us to pause, to breathe deeply of your spirit, and to feel your invitation into this time of holy worship. Lord, we seek to companion our Lord Jesus Christ on the Lenten journey, moving closer and closer to the cross. But yet we carry so much heaviness in our heart, a weighty mix of sin, pain, loss, and fear of the unknown. Lord, we seek your help to remove this weightiness from our heart as we turn to you in worship. Lord, remember that your Son, Jesus Christ, came so that we might have life in abundance here on earth and in the life everlasting. This present state of being is not our future hope. We remember that through Christ we are beloved and forgiven. Lord, in this fearful time, help us to worship today as people who live in hope. While we are separated from each other physically, help the Holy Spirit to bind us together in ways that transcend time and space. We pray in the firm and certain hope of our Lord Jesus Christ, in whose name we pray. Amen. Church, let's turn up the volume and sing together. This is a pre-recorded song, Comfort in You. Please join us in worship. Good morning. This is Pastor Jack Longley greeting you from El Sombroso Oaks in Los Gatos. Last July, my eight-year-old great-grandson, Roman Marquez, attended our worship at PCLG for the first time. As we approached the church, he said to me, Grandpa, I read in a book what you're supposed to do in church. You're supposed to shake someone's hand and say, peace be with you. I got great pleasure watching Roman gleefully going up the center aisle, greeting as many people as he would with those marvelous words, peace be with you. Well, we can't do that today, can we, because of social distancing. But you can just turn to someone in the room, 
that's with you this morning, and you could smile and say those wonderful words. We can also ask God, as did St. Francis of Assisi, that we can be instruments of God's peace every day of this week. Phone someone today, send an email, an e-card, a Facebook post, wishing them the peace of Jesus Christ. Take a walk and wave to a neighbor and say those comforting words, peace be with you. Blessings on you this morning, and may the peace of Christ be upon you this very day. Hey everyone, I sure miss seeing you on Sundays. I hope you're doing well and are feeling happy. Everything's pretty good in our household, managing to stay positive, trying to keep our spirits up. And every once in a while, we of course have our own personal meltdowns, but then we spring back and we're here for one another. So things are good. Um, I hope the same for you and your families. So today I invited some of our fourth and fifth graders to talk to you a little bit more about prayer, more specifically a prayer pattern. That We know that there's lots of ways that we can pray. There's no right or wrong way, but sometimes you might struggle with thinking about what you can pray for rather than things that you're just asking God for, but actually really thinking about other things that you can pray for that don't just involve yourself. So our prayer pattern starts like this. Wow, God, you are followed by, I am sorry for, next, please help, and finally closing with, thank you for. So this is a pattern, a guide that we can use anytime, every day when we pray, and I hope that you will find it useful. This morning, James, Nikki, Carrick, and Peyton will walk you through each section of the pattern and talk to you about it a little bit further. So let's start now with James. Hey, James. Hi, Lauren. Hi, everyone. The first section in our prayer pattern starts by saying, Wow, God, you are. Will you all say that with me? Wow, God, you are. Here, we take time to praise God for who God is. Like, wow, God, you are so loving. Or, wow, God, you are so forgiving. Nikki, what comes next? <gasps> Thanks, James. The next section of our prayer pattern starts by saying, I am sorry for. Will you say that with me? I am sorry for. Here we take time to tell God that we are sorry for something that we did or said. After we confess this to God in our prayer, we can say, please forgive me. Thanks, Nikki. The next section of our prayer pattern starts by saying, please help. Will you say that with me? Please help. Here we take time to ask God for help in our own lives. Help in someone else's life or help for the world. What's next, Peyton? Thank you, Kara. The final section of our prayer pattern starts by saying thank you for. Will you say that with me? Thank you for. Here we take time to thank God and we have a lot to be thankful for. So here's our prayer pattern. Wow, God, you are. I'm sorry for. Please help and thank you for. Back to you, Lauren. Thanks everyone. What a cool prayer pattern. I hope that you'll find it useful as you lean in closer to God this week and take time to pray. Now let's have James, Nikki, Carrick, and Peyton close us in prayer using the pattern we just learned. Have a great week, everyone. Wow, God, you are the creator of life and all happiness. We are sorry for sneaking the bag of marshmallows and eating the whole thing. Please forgive us. Please help heal our world. Thank you, God, for nature. The scripture reading this morning is from Psalm 40, verse 1 through 17. I waited patiently for the Lord. He inclined to me and heard my cry. He drew me up from the desolate pit, out of the miry bog, and set my feet upon a rock, making my steps secure. He put a new song in my mouth, 
a song of praise to our God. Many will see and fear and put their trust in the Lord. Happy are those who make the Lord their trust, who do not turn to the proud, to those who go astray after false gods. You have multiplied, O Lord my God, your wondrous deeds and your thoughts toward us. None can compare with you. Were I to proclaim and tell of them, they would be more than can be counted. Sacrifice and offering you do not desire, but you have given me an open ear. Burnt offering and sin offering you have not required. Then I said, Here I am, in the scroll of the book it is written of me. I delight to do your will, O my God. Your law is within my heart. I have told the great glad news of deliverance in the great congregation. See, I have not restrained my lips, as you know, O Lord. I have not hidden your saving help within my heart. I have spoken of your faithfulness and your salvation. I have not concealed your steadfast love and your faithfulness from the great congregation. Do not, O Lord, withhold your mercy from me. Let your steadfast love and your faithfulness keep me safe forever. For evils have encompassed me without number. My iniquities have overtaken me until I cannot see. They are more than the hairs of my head, and my heart fails me. Be pleased, O Lord, to deliver me, O Lord. Make haste to help me. Let all those be put to shame and confusion who seek to snatch away my life. Let those be turned back and brought to dishonor who desire my trust. Let those be appalled because of their shame who say to me, Aha! Aha! But may all who seek you rejoice and be glad in you. May those who love your salvation say continually, Great is the Lord. As for me, I am poor and needy, but the Lord takes thought for me. You are my help and my deliverer. Do not delay, O oh my God. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you, Ruth Ann, for reading that text for us today. Psalm 40. It's a great uh, passage of scripture if you want to read it back at home on your own. Um, I selected that passage today because I think it's really a psalm for our time. It speaks to some of the uh, things that we face in our lives, and I wanted to offer Psalm 40 to you today. Um, there was a story in the news this past week out of Italy, and we know that Italy is a place where it, there's been so many coronavirus cases. It's been the epicenter for the whole globe, um, and we hope and, we, and we're praying for people in Italy. Uh, we hope that it, things can change there. There's a story from Italy this week about an Italian priest, and maybe you heard about it. His name was Don Giuseppe Berardelli, and I'm sure I'm saying that name wrong. And he was, he's a 72-year-old Italian priest, and he, was, um, he contracted coronavirus, and he went to the hospital. And he was in very critical condition. And so the doctors brought in a ventilator to help him breathe, to put him on a ventilator. And... Um, the report from Italy is that he refused the ventilator and he said, give this ventilator to a younger patient, somebody else uh, who could use it more than me. And so they did. And they passed that ventilator on to somebody else. And he continued in the hospital. And then this, this last week he died. Uh, Don Giuseppe Berardelli, a person who encountered um, the hardship and reality of this life, uh, especially in coronavirus times, and gave, gave up his own uh, help and aid to help somebody else. I'm thinking with you today uh, about this, this passage from Scripture, Psalm 40. It says, I waited patiently for the Lord who inclined and heard my cry. He pulled me up out of the pit, out of the miry clay, and he set my feet upon a rock and made my footsteps firm. And many will see, many will see, and here. And this psalm really echoes um, the, the Lord's Prayer that we've been praying and learning from together. And the part that we're at today is um, lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. What does it mean for God to be a God who delivers us from evil? And I don't want to get into the questions today about um, temptation and um, should we avoid temptation and personal sin. That's not what I'm talking about. And when it comes to using, the way I'm using this phrase, deliver us from evil today, it's not a, a, a whole scope of like all forms of evil in the world. Um, 
you know, personal evil, societal evil, uh, acts of God, nature, any of that. What I really want you to think about when you hear that, that phrase in Jesus' prayer, deliver us from evil, is this truth. There's evil in the world. There are things in our world that are, are not good, and we could call them evil. We, could, we have other names for them as well. We could, we could talk about this as suffering, places of brokenness, hurt, loss, um, things that are not right in our world. That's what I'm talking about today. And this prayer that Jesus teaches his disciples like us to pray says, would you pray and ask your Father in heaven, the one who loves you, would you ask God to be at work to deliver you from evil? Um, there are three kind of truths about this, this prayer that I want to lift up for you today. And the first one is this, there is such a thing as evil in the world. There's a place where, we, and this is not a surprise to us, um, this week I went into the bathroom in the cupboard and I, and I noticed that we were out of toilet paper rolls in, in our bathroom cupboard. And so I went to Lisa and said, Lisa, we're out of TP in the, in the bathroom. And she said, oh, it's in the garage. So, you know, I put it in the garage. We have all this extra TP. I said, oh, great. So I went out there and I came back in. I said, Lisa, the garage door is open. And she froze and she said, is the TP still there? I said, yes, it is. She said, okay, good. Phew. You know, disaster averted. But her mind immediately went to the possibility that somebody had walked into our garage and stolen our teepee. Now, that would really be evil right now, wouldn't it? That would be just wrong. And the reality is that there is evil in the world. There are things that go wrong. That The way that people act sometimes to each other can be that way. Sometimes there are things in nature, like a hurricane, that can be that way. And even this coronavirus, which is not something that we um, mean to give to each other. It's accidental transmission. No one is trying to harm anybody else, and yet it exists. It is present, and it's affecting our lives. I want to lift up, first of all, when, when Jesus says to pray, deliver us from evil, Jesus is telling us there is such a thing as, as evil and wrong and hurt in the world. It really is. Um, I wonder if, if sometimes in good times, you know, like great boom times, um, when our lives are all set and things are going well, if we kind of skip past this part, yeah, okay, there's trouble in the world, but I'm doing all right, I'm doing fine. These days, I want to suggest that um, it's easier to identify for you the places of evil, hurt, harm uh, in your life. I wonder what that is for you. Um, not that you've done anything wrong, but that you're in a place that doesn't feel right. Um, I, we were praying this week on Wednesday night in our Zoom call, our week, midweek Zoom calls at church, and I was asking for prayer requests, and somebody raised a hand and said, I want to pray for graduates, you know, high school graduates, college graduates, people moving from fifth grade to middle school. Um, they're losing the end of their college experience, their grad school experience, their high school experience. They're losing something. There's something wrong about that. We're, we're lifting up, obviously, people who are in hospitals right now, who are getting medical care. Um, people who are working uh, in hospitals, putting themselves in harm's way. When I say this, when I use this word evil, I don't mean to, to use it like um, in, in a blame game or a fault finding, but I want to lift it up as a word that indicates something that's not right in our world. And there are so many things. I wonder for you what that, what that is. Is it a job loss you've already experienced? Is it uncertainty about where this leads for you? Is it a sense that you're stuck at home, you can't get out, you can't go to the grocery store? Um, I wonder if there are um, ways that the, that the climate we're in politically uh, is harming you, hurting you. We can't consume, sometimes if we consume too much of the media, or social media or regular media uh, news, it really sh shapes our thinking and gets us down. I've, I felt that way. Um, we've been lifting up this week especially um, one of the galloping sins that's alive in our country, the, the evil of racism and the way that uh, people are targeted for how they look in our country. And, um, and that's, it. that's an evil, that's a hurt. Deliver us from evil, from the reality of evil. The psalmist says he was down in a, in a miry bog, in a pit, in a place that he was stuck. He just couldn't get out. And we all have those places, we experience that. Usually I would say everyone has that, but right now, today, on Facebook Live, I bet you do, and so do I. So the second um, point of, of this, this prayer, deliver us from evil, there's a reality of evil, and the second point is that we experience it. We get into trouble in our lives. Um, I wonder if you found yourself along the way in a, in a miry bog, 
in, with your feet stuck in clay somehow, a, a place where you can't get out. And we've already kind of named some of those things. I wonder what those things are like for you. Someone raised up this week, uh, people who are in homes where um, they feel trapped, not just because they can't leave, but because they're in a, a relationship that, that experiences abuse. Or where relationships were already strained as it was, and now you're stuck together in this place. Um, I wonder if there are circumstances in your life that have swirled and just caught you up this week. This is a prayer that we pray when we find ourselves in time of trouble, in, in a miry bog. Um, deliver us from evil. Deliver us, God. Get us out of here. And that's the third part of this prayer. Um, where there is evil, we, we experience it in our lives, and the third part is God is the one who delivers us. God is the one who can save. Um, we were in a Bible study this week on, on Zoom, and um, my dad was on the call, you know, and he likes, he's like one of these retired pastors in our church who play the, the wise pastor role. Uh, we have so many of those right now who, are, who, are, um, who bless us. And one of the things that he pointed out in this passage, Psalm 40, he said, watch the verbs, look at the verbs. What are the things that the human does in this psalm? Human does this, I waited patiently. When God gets him out of there, gets the psalmist out of there, he says, I told others, I proclaimed God's goodness in the sanctuary. That's what the human does. What does God do? God met me where I was, lifted me out, delivered me, saved me, set my feet upon the rock, put a new song in my mouth. God is the actor, and we respond to what God does. So our part is to wait and watch, to pray and ask God, God, would you show up? And then God is the one who is able to deliver. God is the one who can deliver us from evil. Now, this isn't a mechanistic thing, you know, like, hey God, um, I prayed this special prayer and now you've got to do this magic trick for me. It doesn't work that way. Um, when it comes to questions of evil, um, a lot of this is actually mysterious. Why is there pain and suffering in the world? The theodicy question. If God is so good and powerful and knowing, how can there be these, these problems in the world? And, and one of the answers that the scripture indicates is there's a mysteriousness to that. Um, our human condition is that we find ourselves trapped and stuck and in these places that hurt. And, um, and then the God of the universe, this is the story of the Bible, the God of the universe comes into the world, comes into people's lives and says, I care about you, I love you, I call you by name, and we follow me. And let me lead you. Let me show you the path. Sometimes that means that God's just with us in our suffering. And that may be um, some of the good news you need to hear, that if you're in that miry pit, God's here with you. Sometimes that looks like God setting, uh, setting a, a way forward and saying, this is the way, walk in it. Maybe there's a new step you want to take this week that will help you uh, in that stuck place of your life, a place that's not right, uh, to take a new step this week. Maybe it's in a relationship. Maybe it's um, at your work and how you're operating. Maybe it's with your kids. Maybe it's in your spiritual life. Maybe it's in your finances. Maybe it's in your... The, the habit of, of what kind of media you're consuming right now. We're all online a lot more. My internet is so slow, it's terrible. We even got a booster and it didn't really help. Um, you know, these are, these are some of the, the realities that we face as everyone's online. Um, I wonder if there's a way that God is leading you and me to take steps um, to get out of this bog led by God, led by the God who saves. Um, but I don't want to set up too easy of a, uh, a dichotomy between, you know, humans who just sit here and, and wait and then God who acts. That's how um, Presbyterians got their name, the frozen chosen, because we have this kind of sense of God's providence, God's, um, the way that God is the one who works and we don't, so we kind of wait and we pray, and yet God is the one who should do it. Um, but I want to suggest to you today, this is my last point, so if you're watching at home, uh, my kids were going nuts with the cats, um, just hang with me. I think that God is the one who acts. God is the one who works. And sometimes um, God, the way that God acts is through human actors. And God, God's work sometimes has human hands. And God's presence sometimes has a human face. And God's phone call sometimes has um, a human voice. So um, we have a part to play. We have a part to play. Um, there was a story um, that I heard about a woman in D.C., Washington, D.C., an older African-American woman who was a, a longtime volunteer at the soup kitchen in the city. 
And um, she was just, you know, a regular weekly person who would come and serve the poor as they would go through. And she would always come a little early and she would pray with the, the volunteers who were there. And a pastor was telling the story and he said that her prayer, uh, this woman, this is what her prayer was. Lord, we know you'll be coming through the line today. So help us treat you well. Lord, we know you'll be coming through the line today. So help us treat you well. And this is the idea that, um, that sometimes God comes to us uh, un, in, in unknown guise, maybe even in the guise of a, of a neighbor, of a homeless person, of a person in need. And um, we're asked to, to serve and to love and to treat that person well. Um, I believe that God works through human hands uh, even now in our coronavirus times. Think about medical professionals who are in hospitals, people who, who gear up and go to work in a place that doesn't feel um, right or safe or good, and then has to come home again at night and, and with, the, with the possibility of infecting their family or impacting uh, the, their household. Um, those people are, are doing brave things, brave work. Uh, think about first responders like um, police and fire and um, ambulance drivers and grocery store clerks. Wow, glo- grocery store people. I went to the grocery store this week and they had a big um, uh, plastic... Um, kind of divider, right, where you check out, almost like a blast shield, you know, like grocery store people are really putting themselves out there. Sometimes God works through human hands, people who keep essential services open. Praise God for that. So I just want to offer you these reflections uh, this week as you continue to, um, to join me in, in waiting, watching, and praying uh, from the place where we find ourselves, a place where um, things aren't right in the world. Um, the coronavirus is, is, is messing things up. And, uh, and then to, to pray to God and say, God, would you meet me here? Would you show me your way? And would you be the one to act and save? Um, we know that God works in each of our lives, and that's what we look for. And we also know that together, as God's people, that we act, that we enact God's will. And that's what we seek to do. So um, God bless you as you think about, about what this all means, the, the reality of pain and suffering in the world, the way that it happens to us, and the way that God in Christ, Jesus Christ, Um, comes to you with the power to save in his hand. May it be so for you as you go into this week ahead. God bless you. Amen. We are a praying church, and week by week, we share prayers together in the life of our church, both joys and concerns, sort of the ups and downs of life. And we do that because we trust that our God um, is active in our world and in our lives. Our God hears us when we pray. Our God loves it when we pray, when we bring our needs um, before, before God. And I want to invite you today to a little time of prayer uh, together. And the way that we, I want to do it today is to lift up a number of kind of categories and groups of people. Um, and and our, our prayer pattern is, Lord, in your mercy, 
hear our prayers. And I'll say, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. And you can respond. You can use the chat box there if you want. Um, you can add prayers if, you, if you'd like on there. We will check those uh, this week to add to our church's um, uh, prayer life. So um, I just want to start off by obviously praying for people affected by the coronavirus in these days, those who are already sick uh, in our country and around the world, those who are, um, who are at home or already in hospital or receiving um, intensive care, those who have passed away and their families, uh, for people being directly medically impacted. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. I want to pray for those um, hospitals and uh, people working in hospitals, for doctors and nurses and medical staff, for intake people, um, for anybody who is um, an essential worker putting themselves out there. I'm, we're praying and lifting up first responders like um, fire firemen and women, police officers, um, grocery store personnel. Aren't they essential? Uh, for people who are just interacting with folks who can't stay home, they've got to work and they're doing it on our behalf. So I want to lift um, all of them up today. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. We want to pray for those who have um, already um, lost jobs, who've been laid off, those who have lost hours, those who have had reductions in pay, those who uh, fear that that might be coming down the line, um, just for the economic impact of all of this. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. We always have a special heart, um, as God does, for those who are on the margins of our society, those who are just around the edges. So I want to lift up today those today who are far from home and stuck somewhere, whether they're stuck here or they're stuck somewhere else trying to get back. We pray for those who are um, hourly workers, um, especially people who work in restaurants. Pray for people who are house cleaners, people who, um, whose livelihoods are being wiped out. We pray for small business owners trying to stay afloat. Um, I want to lift up anybody um, who is today uh, not in their, their home country, um, refugees, immigrants, migrants, uh, guest workers, uh, people whose lives are not settled right now. Um, we pray all of these things. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. I want to pray and lift up just for our church today, especially um, a prayer for our Asian American sisters and brothers in these days. You know, this uh, coronavirus has been called different things by different people and um, including some that, that indicate that it, that it originated in China and have used that, uh, maybe on purpose and maybe not, um, to, to kind of stigmatize and uh, call out uh, Asian American people. And this is a time when uh, we've heard a lot of reports in the news and just anecdotally about um, Asian American people in our country feeling afraid, in our community feeling afraid, in our church, our church feeling afraid. And um, we're, we're sisters and brothers with, with each other, and we don't, we don't stand for that. We do not. And I want to encourage you in your prayer life to lift up, especially those who are feeling marginalized or targeted or fearful these days, especially because of their race or um, ethnic background. And um, that's a real concern of our church, one of our big values. And so I'm praying to God just to, for the sin of racism and that we would be people who bring balm and healing. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Um, I'm going to lift up a couple of just particular prayers. Uh, one is for the family of Kolb Nakata. We just heard news this week that um, Kolb passed away, a longtime member of our church, along with his wife. And so we're just praying for their family these days. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Um, also, a couple of people in our church life who are on hospice care, um, Eleanor Schaefer and Linda um, Iverson, um, just as they enter this last season of their life, that God will be with them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. There's a list um, of, of prayers that are on the bulletin that you can click on through in the chat box there if you want. You can see some of the others in, in the life of our church who are in need of ongoing prayer. And maybe you have people on your own list um, at home or that you're going to add into our, into our conversation on the side here. We lift those as well. God knows them. God hears. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. So I want to use this prayer that I found this week. It's called A Prayer to God in Anxious Times. Um, it's by, a prayer by Cornelius Platinga, Jr. You join me in prayer. Gracious God, champion of the universe, we so often fluff ourselves up. Aren't we the only creatures who compose masterpieces of art and music? Don't we govern ourselves, enrich ourselves, promote ourselves? Aren't we 
Can't we dunk basketballs and bat baseballs and spike volleyballs? Aren't some of us masters of comic irony? Other creatures don't practice rocket science. We do. And yet, here we are, afraid and frightened by a thing so small that it can't be seen under most microscopes. It's not even an animal or a plant. It's a virus, a mere parasite, dependent on our own living cells to replicate, and yet it has shuttered our schools, canceled our flights, and emptied our churches. It has consumed the attention of our leading scientists, wrenched our politics out of shape, dominated our conversations, and scared the daylights out of us. We don't want to get sick, and we don't want to die. We are afraid, oh God, afraid of a microorganism, even afraid of each other. Great and quiet source of peace, quiet our fears. We are wary, uncertain, strung tight. Quiet our fears. We have no idea what the future will bring, but we do know that you will be in our future to hold us there. We cannot quiet ourselves, O God. We cannot comfort ourselves, cannot heal ourselves, cannot help ourselves. All we can do is wash our hands and keep our distance. Our rocket science is no good to us for this threat. O God, great and quiet source of peace, quiet us, your anxious ones, and let us cling for comfort to your suffering son, Jesus Christ. Gather us under his wings, Remind us that he suffers with us and that he also is the great physician. In him, let us not be afraid. Let us not be afraid. Hear us as we pray together the words that Jesus taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. Good morning, everyone. I'm Taylor Kim in my home. This doll is one I prepared about a month ago when we were planning to hold the communal worship in the sanctuary. It is purpose doll for the season of Lent. But now, it, as it has turned out, I use this in a different location that I never expected. The human mind plans the way, but the Lord directs the steps. Proverbs 16.9 the human mind plans the way, but the Lord directs the steps. Our life and death all belong to God. Wherever we are, we are under care of the ubiquitous Almighty God. Amen. Now we are here to wait for the Lord. We give thanks to God for our daily bread and the people around us. We are called to offer our body as a living, pleasing sacrifice. Let's offer our life to God as a confession and thanksgiving. Even though we are physically far apart, we will continue to worship today. During our offering time this morning, we do our online giving now on the church website. We are also offering a musical piece put together by our musical staff. I will enjoy the music with you.
forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. What a beautiful piece. I want to pray for us and just um, dedicate the offering of the gifts that are given today. Let's pray. God, we give you thanks for the gifts that you have given to us in our lives, uh, each one of us. Help us to count our blessings today. I do pray that you would um, take the offerings given today uh, online and that will be sent in this week that, and bless them and multiply them and use them for your church, for uh, the work of your church, for the witness of your church to be the body of Christ. And we pray that you would help us do that, no matter what our financial circumstances are, to always trust in you. And so we do. In Christ Jesus we pray, amen. Amen, friends, we're at the end of our service time today, and I wanna send you out into your week with a, a word of blessing. Uh, I look forward to seeing many of you on Wednesday night for our Zoom, and if not, next week back here on Facebook Live. It's gonna be Palm Sunday, and um, we're gonna do it differently than we've ever done Palm Sunday before. So I look forward to sharing that with you uh, just next week. So as you go, receive this blessing and benediction. Go forth into the world in peace and be of good courage. Hold fast to that which is good. Render to no one evil for evil, but support the weak. Help the afflicted. Honor all persons. Love and serve the Lord, rejoicing in the power of his spirit. And may the blessings of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, descend upon you and remain within you, both now and forevermore. Amen. Amen. Have a great week.